In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a multiple fill-in-the-blank custom question slide in the all-new Adobe Captivate. My name's Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with all of your e-learning colleagues. I have a client I've been working with for a number of years now and they typically provide me with a storyboard and ask me to build it for them using whichever tool that I'm using at the time. Now, when I started with them, I was using Adobe Captivate Classic and it wasn't uncommon for them to use one of these multiple fill in the blank question slides that are built into Classic Captivate. Unfortunately, that question format is just not available anymore. So I had to come up with a custom solution and that's what I'm gonna share with you here today. Let's take a look. All right, so I have a blank slide here. Let's do a couple of things just to get started here. I'm gonna edit my theme to include only the fonts that I intend to use. In this case here, I'm going to use, let's use Gadoogie. I just love saying Gadoogie and that's probably why. And we can go up in the second font here and select Gadoogie from my recent fonts there. And I'm going to go ahead and apply that so all of my fonts will already be Gadoogie. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the play bar because when you build your own custom question slides, obviously we don't want people to bypass them just by clicking the right arrow in the play bar. So we'll do that as well. And to start off with, I'm going to add a paragraph block. And here's where I'm going to place the question slide title. In this case here, I'm just gonna type in question and a colon, and we'll probably replace that with something more specific later. I'm gonna go into my visual properties and we'll switch that to heading six. I don't need it to be so large there. I'm gonna copy and paste my question stem, which is great customer service begins with blank carefully and responding with blank period. Now, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, auto layout in my designs and reducing the padding at the top and the bottom, not because I wanna to cram too much information on the screen, but you know when some of these content blocks will later appear, it won't look too um, tight. So I'm gonna change that to 10 pixels and 10 pixels at the top there. And that sort of takes care of my question stem. I'm gonna add another content block here, in this case, also a paragraph block. And we're going to change that a little bit here. So first of all, let's turn on auto layout. Let's set this to be 10 pixels, 10 pixels at the top and bottom. And also, I don't want this to appear by default because this is actually one of my feedback captions. So I'm gonna select the hide during publish option up here. And uh, like the stem, I'm going to change that to heading six so it's nice and compact. I'm gonna click outside of any of the components and we're also going to add a button and we're gonna add a card to this as well. Again, this will be my correct feedback caption. And we'll give them a nice exclamation mark there. And we'll just actually put the same thing in here, but we'll put the answers in the fill in the blank. So great customer service begins with listening carefully and responding with empathy. And just to make it look um, a little bit more fill in the blanky, <laughs> I'm gonna add the underline to these words here. and minus the, there we go. Now in this case here, this button is going to be my next button, which will take me to the next slide, or in this case, the quiz results slide. I don't have a quiz results slide, but the easiest way to add a quiz results slide is to make sure this button is included in the quiz. That's where I'm gonna assign the points for this question. 
and I'm going to make them 10 points. Now I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Control D and we'll create our incorrect caption. So I'll change this to say incorrect and with the actual statement here I'll say the correct answer is and we'll put this in quotation marks there. In the case of the next button, this is a missed opportunity, so we're going to uncheck Include in Quiz. Now the very next thing I want to do is add my fill-in-the-blank short answer input fields, if you will, and uh, we'll select those from our interactive components section here. We'll do an input field. I don't need a label, so we'll get rid of that. I do want to change my input field text uh, to do a couple of things. First of all, I want the answers always to be in lowercase, so I don't need to worry about you know, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and all the possibilities that my student might put in there. Let's also do our usual adjustment here to the uh, uh, top and bottom padding for each one there, and under text, we'll select Gadoogie as well. I just love saying Gadoogie. I don't know what it is. Uh, that looks pretty good here. So let's uh, let's adjust the auto layout. I don't know why I didn't capture that before, but let's do that now. And I'm going to duplicate this so I have a second one. The only difference with the second one is I'm going to add a button, and that's going to be my submit button here. Okay. With our input fields, I do want to make sure that the disabled state is turned on for both of these. So I'm going to right click on those and enable them. And I also want to do the same thing for my submit button. I want to enable that. And while I'm here, I can also disable the selected state. I would only use a selected state in a tabbed interaction or something like that. Now, because of the nature of this interaction, uh, when we leave this slide, the input fields and the submit button will be disabled. So if I retake this question slide, I want to enable those. So I'm going to need um, an on enter advanced interaction. And I'm going to select interactions here. Click on add interaction and we'll select slide enter as my timeline trigger. And what we're going to do is we are going to, first of all, enable my two input fields and the submit button. Press next and then press done. And then I'm also going to ensure that the correct and the incorrect captions are hidden. And we're going to do that from the content sections because we want to hide the content sections in its entirety, including the space around it. So I'm going to select those, press next. We can choose reset state on slide revisit and then press done. Now you might be thinking that storing something in the variables for these input fields is going to be important, but actually I'm not going to use variables for this. Instead, my submit button is going to look at the contents of our short answer or text input fields. So let's start to write our submit button here. So we'll go in and uh, this will be a conditional interaction. So we'll select conditions and we'll say if the content of our element, in this case input field 1, is equal to a value of listening, press save, and we'll add another condition, and this will show up as an AND condition, also content of element, in this case input field 2, is equal to a value of empathy, press save. We will do a number of things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to show the correct message Again, you want to do this from content sections and select it from there. Scroll down, press next. You can reset state on slide revisit and press done. We also want to disable our input fields and the submit button so that they can't change their answer. I mean, they got it correct, so they shouldn't want to anyway, but just as a precaution. So we'll add a new action. 
We'll go into the more section of actions and we will choose to disable and we'll scroll down and select our last three elements, our two input fields and the submit button and press next and then done. Okay. Um, let's show our results slide so that when I select correct, I go to the next slide and then done. We'll do the same thing for the incorrect while we're here. Go to next slide and then done. Okay, let's go back to our submit button. So we took care of when it's all correct. So we have that set up. Now what if it's not correct? That gets taken care of under the else section. So here we want to First of all, show under content section our incorrect block in its entirety. Next, reset state on slide revisit and then done. Also, we need to disable our input fields and our submit button just like we did before. So under more, we will disable input field one and two and our submit button and then next. Done. Remember, if we return to this slide, those items will be enabled and our feedback captions will be hidden. Let's go over to our results slide. We want to allow unlimited attempts and we're going to show a retake button. I could do a review quiz option where maybe there's some back and next buttons on each of these custom slides. But for this video today, we'll, we'll skip that. I'll go into the edit drop down menu, go into preferences and under quizzing, we will uncheck allow users to review the quiz. Okay. Click on okay. And while I'm here, I'm going to make that look like the other buttons. And I think we're good to test this out. So let's do a preview. All right. So here is our question slide. Let's get it obviously wrong and just type in a nonsense answer for both of those input fields and we'll press submit. Incorrect, notice I can't change my answer, it's now locked and if I press next, I go to my quiz results slide or whatever other slides I have prepared here. But clearly when I get to the, the quiz, I've missed that question and I would like to retake this quiz now. So when I retake the quiz, it does come back here, it clears out all of my uh, captions that may have displayed. There's probably a JavaScript uh, item that could clear out input fields. I don't know it yet, um, but that's something I certainly can uh, can work on there. And let's just do this and we'll type in begins with listening with empathy. Okay. Submit, that's correct. And of course it gives me the feedback that that's what it should read. Next, and I pass the course and uh, my custom question slide works under both circumstances, when you get it right and of course when you get it wrong. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.